This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stormberg, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now at uh, the airport in Oslo, and uh, we're gonna do it, guys. We have Lotus Electra here. So this is a drive event. You see, there are more and more uh, 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 me. Uh, I don't know what you call them, uh, influencers, uh, journalists arriving. Fortunately. Uh, for me, I will get the car alone. So, you know, uh, let me just quickly tell you guys, a typical drill is that there will be press events. Uh, you, many times you arrive at some hotel or at the airport. And like over here, you see you have lots of press cars ready. Uh, I'm not sure where these guys come from, but uh, since I live here, I requested uh, a, a custom. I don't want to follow the regular route. Uh, usually there's a, like a route. Uh, with some twisty roads and maybe some city driving and uh, fortunately Lotus they told me I could just do whatever I like as long as I get over to the well hotel in around four hours ish so it's like yes thank you so we, we will just do our own thing uh, I will go to Mjösen and we'll drive on the motorway we do some tests and then we also try to do some uh, charging tests because this car supposedly takes 350 kilowatt I'm not sure if I'll be able to go that deep but we'll see because the drag coefficient is only 0.26 so let me show you now we have lots of lotus electric heads and this is the one i'm gonna borrow is s yeah the other guys supposedly they will have to share cars with other guys but big thumbs up to lotus for providing me a car for me alone so i think the lotus they understand the importance of me reviewing the car in the way i do it so yeah this is real carbon fiber guys we're gonna look at this more in another video i think we need to focus on the driving today we have charge port here on the left side with the right side on the right side with the wrong side so that's nice and then, look 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 this is the four seater you can also get it in the five seater the four seater cannot fold the seats but it's more like the executive seats oh yeah man and just look just look at the Kef speakers with Dolby Atmos. So there's just the level of detail there. Just like we saw on the pre-production, this is actually a serial production car. So show you here in the back. Yeah, they changed this one, which is good because it was freaking heavy on the, on the prototype. This one seems to be more uh, lighter and, and more like it should be in most cars. And then also, let me show you another thing. Of course, we have soft close so the s1 includes lots of equipment uh, this would probably be the the best seller in norway it's all-wheel drive uh, 112 kilowatt hour that's for the all all of the other cars also uh, the engineers told me that this has, has 109 kilowatt hour net capacity it has humongous rims pirelli p0 no yoke 315 35 22 inches holy macaroni and in the front 275 40 22 you see the lake they don't uh, play around here <laughs> and then inside voila so the price here the, the starting price in norway is 1.35 million nook so it's kind of like a competitor to fat e-tron but i would say we'll see i guess but this looks really really impressive man nothing like i've ever seen like you know EQS go home, BMW go home. Oh, flip leather, steering wheel, camera mirrors. And you can just do this to adjust the camera mirror and then you do this and then you adjust the other side. Huh? Okay, let's get over, uh, let's get on the road. So I need to do lots of tests here. Um, we have 93% battery and we have a trip meter here. This is the stuff I need to know for estimating uh, capacity and uh, consumption and everything they claim it's, a, it's supposed to be efficient so we'll see about that yeah uh let me see oh let me check something oh yeah, yeah i can of course adjust the yeah i can adjust the seat belt here you can see there what can you see it yeah okay anyway i need to reset some stuff and then get on the road okay we're now leaving the airport area and uh yeah my first impression of this car you know it's they call it SUV, right? Some kind of sports SUV. Sport, I don't know, is it crossover SUV? But uh, I saw some stuff under the hood. This car has. Wait, let me. Oh, it's quick. Ugh. This is only the S version. The R version has 900 horsepower. Don't remember the figures for this one. But uh, of course, overdrive, that's what people care about. Also for Norwegians. 
um, the, all the versions they can tow 2,250 kilograms. Sound level se seems okay for freaking humongous rims and also fat rims. So, but also, you know, this car has a 48 volt system plus a 12 volt system. I saw it under the hood, I can show you maybe in another video. Uh, and the reason for it is that the 48 volt system controls the suspension. Uh, they call it uh, Wang stabilization. That was the German guy, yeah. <laughs> a guy named Peter. <laughs> I talked to him. But it's like wagon stabil. It stabilizes the car. Uh, so I think if we go sideways, it will be okay, yeah. Uh, we wanted to test it on more, more on twisty roads. But it, the crazy thing is that the 12 volt and the 48 volt system is equipped with super capacitors also. He said they are roughly 60 amp hour or uh, something. So you see, that's only around seven, like less than 100 watt hour or, or I don't know, for the 48 volt system, but it's, it's just to power it for maybe 10 minutes in an emergency in case the 12 volt or the 48 volt system is not uh, there uh, or uh, operational, but also for the stabilization. You know, like if you if you have fast movements, you know, like this. Okay, I just changed it without uh, blinking, like a BMW driver. But you need to be able to. The motors need uh, current, instant, and that's what the supercapacitor can do. It can deliver in a matter of milliseconds. So that was like, wow, ha! They have supercapacitors here, but okay, it's not high capacity, but it's just for delivering fast current. So now we just have to head uh, north towards Mjösen and then we'll start doing some tests but I have to pass through some slow stretches first because there is some uh, Baustelle. Wow look at this Tesla style uh, driving visualization here. <laughs> so this car is equipped with LiDAR they have not been enabled yet and also this car is supposed to have uh, level 3 autonomous driving but oh this is pretty cool and you have a tiny screen here uh, for some information. All right let's check the weight of the car first front axle oh 1360 all right oh 2700 okay well it's 112 kilowatt hour and some soundproofing we are getting close to Strandlicha and oh yeah you know when i was driving here at night doing range tests they closed one lane oh it's actually two lanes and it was slow traffic, but in the daytime, of course, they couldn't do that because of traffic. So this is good because it means that I can do my high-speed test here, except for that uh, there's some traffic. But listen, this is the fresh asphalt laid down just a couple of days ago versus somewhat rough asphalt. And you can almost not hear any difference. <laughs> in uh, cars with poor soundproofing, you, you hear big difference. It's like night and day. So, all right. Um, yeah, you see here? I'm going to go back to Ionity Darden and then start my 120 test and then turn around here. Yeah, wow, okay, ooh, I like it, man. I like the way the car rides and also the soundproofing despite having fat tires. Okay, so here, by the way, is the place I normally turn around from, uh, from uh, Dahl to here. Yeah, let me see now. How will this car handle in the roundabouts? If it has some kind of chassis control, what, what do they call it again? Uh, Wang stabilizer, yeah, in, in Deutsch. Oh, okay, wow, it, huh? You see, it, it has air suspension, and I think that's, that's the thing, that the air suspension is supposed to uh, mitigate uh, uh, sway. Oh, yeah, P0. Oh, oh, wow, it has this nice pull past 100 kilometers per hour. This thing is a beast. Some cars, they kind of lose oomph past 100 kilometers per hour. This thing just almost feels like it goes faster. It has more and more power the faster you go. Power overwhelming. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Now we get stuck behind the Norwegian left lane of this club. All right, we are back at Arnotidal now. So I will write down this first segment. This is from the airport. I will add, yeah, the, the trip here is a little bit clumsy. This one seems to be self uh, automatically reset uh, for charging. Uh, actually, can we use this one? Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm going to use uh, this one. Let me see here. We have uh, 
how much did it drive? Okay, now I'll just use, use this one based on 93% we started with and we tried to estimate uh, net capacity, but okay. So let me reset and then we try 120 test. All right, we're on the move and today we don't have too much wind. Well, I can't see Mjolsen from here, but okay. Yeah, we're on the new fresh asphalt. And then, to, uh, let me see, yeah, outside it's 23 degrees. So here we see Tesla style uh, driving visualization. Hmm, interesting. Wait, huh? How much from Tesla did they copy? Because the car claims, well, it was 50. Now it's 110. <laughs> okay. Um, but we do have an instrument cluster. It looks like this. So see, we have some information here about the region level speed, speed limits, some kind of driving information here, some range numbers, battery in percentage. I like that. And also we have now tour driving mode. So yeah, but uh, we also have, um, see, we have a small screen over here. So you see, we have Spotify support. And when you're playing music, it shows up over here. Huh? That's neat, man. Many cars, uh, they tend to have some kind of screen for the passenger here, but it's not utilized for anything. But here, you can actually use it for something useful. Nice. And then, okay, I have to have the HVAC on 25 degrees Celsius. It's acting like a Chinese car. It's been tuned for that. If you have it in 21, it's going to be freezing cold in here. And then how are the camera mirrors working in the tunnel? Um, well, they seem okay. Yeah, let's see on this side here. Yeah, it's okay, uh, even though I, I prefer conventional mirrors, not these ones. All right, result from the 120 test, uh, 276 watt hour per kilometer. I guess that's not too bad, um, but I have to also check for distance error here. Okay, let's do the 90 test then. We are on the way back now, so that, wait, what the heck, man? Yeah, the car likes to beep at you, it? and he has, has head up the head of display. But okay, so that was just a short loop because I had to prioritize going a little bit faster and uh, try to bring down the battery before I do the charging test. And also it just happened to be on a Friday afternoon. So oof. yeah, I had to take into account maybe some Ladestau also at Ion Tidal. But so far the consumption is 218 watt hour per kilometer. Oh, what the heck, man? Yeah, uh, average speed, okay, it's 88. Yeah, that's good. So um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, you see here, you can also... Oh, man. You can also press some buttons over here to uh, open the charge port or uh, stuff, open the trunk, yeah, so uh, very nice. Now, it's kind of weird, we have to be in the charger screen in order to see the trip meter. Yeah, you can set charge limit uh, here also. This dry battery management thing here is only after you park the car, you can then, I don't know what it's supposed to do, uh, cool down the battery, maybe use some extra energy to cool down the battery. But in order to preheat, you have to navigate to a fast charge and then it will, it will automatically do that for you. As I talked to some of the Lotus engineers before we went on this trip now. All right, 216 watt hour per kilometer, not too bad. Okay, so now we're down to 47%. We need to hammer it down to at least 10%. Right now we're just heading north, we just have to drive down the battery. And uh, one thing I like about this navigation is that when you pan or something, it stays there. It doesn't auto-zoom something shit like that. <laughs> but it has um, a satellite map. And the satellite map, man, for this location is really weird because it seems like they just happen to have some kind of cloudy... You don't see Mjösen here. But if we switch over to default, then you will see Mjösen. <laughs> so, all right. So I navigated to Ionity so that it will preheat for fast charging. So I'm not sure what it will do, but yeah. So right now we are down to 35%. So hopefully we have enough juice so we can preheat. I have no idea how long it preheats until what percent and all that. Uh, I need to find out more, uh, talk to the, the engineers uh, tonight. Well, okay, drive a little bit more north and then head back to Ionity. That's the plan. Okay, let's test the sound system. We have Kef speakers and Dolby Atmos. Huh? It better be good, right? Okay, I only have one song I want to play here uh, because uh, I forgot the USB stick at home. Oh, okay. Prior to this, I've been testing the sound system and it sounds incredible. It's right on par with Budimester, Hammond Carden, Bowers and Wilkins, and the top tier, the high end. Maybe this song or this this playback device here might not be the best. I've tested it on um, 
on the Spotify where it was really nice and clear. Here I feel like there might be a little bit of uh, losses maybe in the encoding, but okay. But I can tell you that the bass is nice and punchy and it goes really deep. You could almost feel the rumbling in some of the deepest tones. But you see, I don't know, I tried to ask them where are the subwoofer. Uh, they said there's a little bit, some here, some in the back there, but I feel like it's not like the loose, loose undefined bass is deep but punchy at the same time but it also has the clearness in the mid and high tones uh, this the music is just simply amazing to listen to it's such a pleasure i was like wow i was blown away by how well this sound system is and also we are driving on semi rough, rough asphalt not going at 90 kilometers per hour but because we have so good soundproofing you can actually enjoy the music you know I, when i was sitting here listening to music uh, for a while now i was trying to figure out whether this is better than than uh, mercedes uh, eqs and the uh, burmester that's how good i get I, I mean how good the impression of this sound system is man it is awesome i can try to play it for you get an impression via the microphone here okay well anyway the test is almost done let's focus on the consumption and the charging soon also and then here we have a handle for dry mode if you press this one you can switch between dry modes range mode zoop changes like this then it shows range over there it changes some characteristics with tour mode you can change uh, ride height and then if you put it in sport i can feel like the the side bolsters and the seat they are tightening up Ooh. and then individual yeah so uh, yeah just use tour mode for now yeah now i feel like the the side bolsters they loosen up a bit and then also let me see uh, how is this again if you go to this one and then uh yeah okay here, here so if you go here and then you can just do it like this and then you press it then you get some options and if you press this one you will then have the opportunity to change um this the spoiler position so it's set to auto now and it's in the huh, i can see it in it's in the up where can you see it it's a little bit up yeah uh, i don't think you can change it now uh, it says that once you drive faster than 30 kilometers per hour it's automatic but it will just adjust it according to what it needs so i bet if you put it in sport mode it will, it will make sure you have enough downforce so you know what they say uh there are some some set of rules uh, what kind of cars do you not want to race well you don't want to race something that says performance you don't want to race something that says gtr or something right but also Rule, another rule is that never try to race something with adaptive spoiler <laughs> we are heading back now and you see the sun is uh, above us but uh, against our face a little bit and then i noticed that we have freaking reflections we have glossy surface here so depends on which uh, angle you're driving but many many times right now at least um, stuff will reflect in my face there is yeah, I mean, there are some places you can uh, you can wrap like this part here, but then some of the buttons are a little bit too shiny. You can't do anything about that. So that's a slight bummer. You better not live in a place with a lot of sun. All right, we're done with the test. Uh, so this one was actually the segment with the 90 test also. So I will uh, do my math and figure out how big the battery is. We're down to 3%. Hopefully we have hot enough battery. I mean, it's 24 degrees outside, so you shouldn't cold get too much, right? Let's see if we can get 350 kilowatt hour per hour. Well, we're plugged in now, so let's see. I set up the camera here to record the charging session, and ooh, it's taking 250 kilowatt. Shit, it's so hard to see the screen. Uh, let me see how hard to. Yeah, yeah, it's taking 253 kilowatt right now, not 350 maybe because the battery is not in optimal temperature but this is still really good i tried to go as deep as possible so hopefully it uh, builds up the heat so we get uh, i don't know if you see 350 or not but 
Wow, so seven, wow, 711 volt even at low state of charge. We'll see how high it goes once it's uh, at higher state of charge, but uh, 255, yeah, so it's building up something here. Okay, let's see inside the car what it looks like. Okay, inside here, we only see kilometers per hour charging speed and we see percentage, not kilowatt. Hmm. And here we can set charge limit. Yeah, uh, we'll see, maybe I'll go 100%. Oh, okay, <laughs> we see voltage and amps here. So based on this, you could, if you're a ninja, you could calculate how many kilowatt we had take. Wait, 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 how many kilowatt is this? Let me check outside now. Maybe it's ramping up. Ooh, 300. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so excited to see this because this is the first time I tried a car, a charger car that can hit 300 kilowatts. Wow. Oh, it seems like it's heating up the battery. It's trying to get out of the cold gates. 300 kilowatt right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, we maintain uh, a little bit over 300 kilowatt. I think it peaked at 307 kilowatt until around, yeah, a little bit over 30%. And now it dropped. So now we're down to 240. Still quite decent. Yeah, voltage is also going up. So fairly nice and flat charging curve. Oh, oh, what the heck happened here? Just a minute ago, it was taking 250 kilowatt. Wait, I almost can't see the screen. Look now, it's charging at 44 kilowatt. What the heck? Wait, is the car rapid gating? Huh? Are you serious? It's charging at 44. Let me, let me look here. Look here. Suddenly the speed plummeted. For, wait, wait, wait. Okay, now, oh, okay, it had a little... Uh, a Korean siesta. Oh, now it goes up again. Okay, that was a really short one. We were talking about 30 second dip, but I also turned off HVAC so that any cooling will be uh, diverted towards the battery, not into the cabin. Okay, let's, let me show you now. So now we're back on the speed. Oh, look at what the heck, man. That is just insane. Try to zoom in and show you. Look, look at that. Even at 62%, we are taking 230 kilowatt. I think we have a winner here. Yes, 800 volt for the win. Wait, speaker 800 volt. I need to test B3 supercharger, but then I'll be, uh, I will have too high state of charge. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, look here. If we click here, enter the spoiler. What, what the heck, this animation? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, let me see. Look, look at the back, look, look. Hey, 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 focus, focus. The, the, the. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Nice, nice indeed. Okay, we're going to test this. We are now at uh, Mortensrud, Chem Power, 150 kilowatt, but 400 volt architecture. How fast will we charge? Unfortunately, we have 85%. Let's check out here. I know that the charging voltage uh, at Ionity is supposed to be. Uh, ooh, ooh. I don't know if you see what I see. No, at Ionity, uh, at 800 volt, we're supposed to get around 810 volts in the pack, or at least charging voltage. Here it's 450. I don't know, can you see that shit? Oh, you know what I think? This, it works similar to, um, uh, similar as the, the, the Korean cars, the eGMP platform, like Kia EV6 and Ionic 5. I suspect that it's using the drivetrain to convert 400 volt into 800 volt and it's requesting 448 volts just like the eGMP cars but okay it goes kind of slow <laughs> that's a different story but it, oh sorry with Taycan Taycan seems to use a voltage doubler so if it will work like Taycan then we'll be getting or we'll be requesting around 410 405 volts wait what Okay, but I think we tested enough now. I have to return the car. So um, I will ask the engineers about how this works. Okay, so based on this test now, we went from 93% to 3%. Uh, deep enough, but uh, not 100% accurate. But I estimated 104.3 kilowatt hour net capacity. That's pretty good. And then uh, based on the range, okay, this car I estimate also, uh, sorry, over report, wait, under report distance by 1.2%. Uh, not accurate enough but close enough and then based on all this you see that we get a decent range so 
you know, it is what it is, right? Some kind of performance SUV with fat tires. So based on that, yes, uh, the consumption numbers are actually, uh, would say outstanding for, for example Tesla, but as some kind of semi-performance car with fat tires and somewhat boxy shape, yeah, that is pretty good. So yeah, uh, but man, I love the car. It's like I started driving it. It was like instant love for this car. The way it rides, the soundproofing, the, the stereo system, uh, the sporty ride, uh, just the, the steering wheel, the interior, oof. You know, yes, the German car manufacturers like Mercedes, Audi and BMW, they be, should be worried because this car, okay, it's expensive, similar to those cars, but it's also really, really good. So yeah, when it comes to charging, you will have to look at that in a separate video. There will be more details, but I'm going to compare it against some other batteries also. For example, maybe EQS battery kind of makes sense, right? Or fat e-tron battery, something in the, around 110, 120 kilowatt hour range. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.